Hey guys, what's up? It's Isaac David, and this is The Daily Disciple, where I help you follow Jesus daily. Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be talking about when it's okay to deconstruct your faith. That might sound scary to some of you, and if you've been following me a while, you know that I've talked about uh, kind of the detriments, the problems with deconstructionism and this growing movement. I have some clarification. It's an important conversation, so let's get into it. But first, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone on Patreon. You guys know it's the people on Patreon that make this ministry keep going and growing. Um, this is my life's mission. I can't put it any other way. I'm passionate about sharing Jesus online, helping people follow Jesus daily for the glory of God. And it's because of your guys' support on Patreon that I can continue to do this. Um, we are almost at 100 patrons, which is crazy to me. Um, I never would have thought it would got to this point, but now we're on this path of like actually being able to see this destination of being able to do this full time. And so I'm just so excited about the future, what God's got going on with the ministry. So if you want to help support that, um, head on over to patreon.com slash daily underscore disciple link in bio. You get to join the discord with other Christians. Uh, you get the online purity Boot Camp, which is a 10 video. I think it's a 10 video series. It might be eight. No, I think it's 10, 10 video, uh, video part, uh, series all about helping you break free from online lust and pornography. And, uh, you also get bonus episodes of sibling squabble. So I don't want to belabor the point, but you can head on over to Patreon to join, uh, on there. Thank you so much guys. Now, onto the video. Okay, so recently I put out a video commentating on this TikTok, which I will play for you now. Ultimately, whether you're deconstructing your faith or renovating your faith, you're doing the same thing. You're looking at the Bible and you're erasing the parts that you don't like and you're writing in the parts that you do like. You're forming a God into your own image, a God that you can put up with, that you find to be reasonable and respectable. Yes, Jesus was about love and acceptance, but he was also about repentance and truth. If you don't accept all of God's attributes, you are worshiping an idol. Now, I got quite a bit of pushback on this. Uh, TikTok, like when I posted it, um, I, you know, people were like, Isaac, that's not the main core of deconstructionism, or you're getting it wrong, or you're off on this one. And so I wanted to explore a little bit more in when, on wh when it's okay to deconstruct your faith and some of the problems with the vast majority of the deconstructionist movement, because I don't think I got this one wrong. I'm just going to put it out there, but I do think there's some nuance here. So let's just talk about deconstructionism in general. There is a growing group of people that or trying to take apart the fundamentals of the faith. That's who I'm addressing when I talk about deconstructionism usually because that's the vast majority of the movement. It's people that are taking apart the fundamentals of the faith. They are creating for themselves an idol a Jesus that looks good to them, that is reasonable, that can fit and conform into our culture. Generally, the hangups are um, LGBT issues, abortion, um, maybe, you know, Jesus was a socialist, the, the authority of the Bible. All these things are put into question or inserted into the Bible in order to make Jesus and, and Christianity more uh, nicer. You know, like for the vast majority of people... Christians seem, I don't know, bigoted and hateful and mean. And we don't want to be those kind of people. We want to be nice. So then people kind of deconstruct their faith, what they thought to be true and conform it and, and rebuild or renovate it to a place that they can be happy with, that they can uh, really identify with this Jesus. Yes, this is somebody I like. This is a belief system that I want to be a part of. I don't need to go into depth and why that's a bad thing. I feel like for a lot of people watching this, you can already begin to say, okay, that doesn't sound right to me. This doesn't sound like a good thing you're taking apart or deconstructing what is known as orthodox Christianity. I'm not talking about orthodox like Catholic or orthodox. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the, the brand of like across history back from the apostles and like what has been known to be the fundamentals of orthodox Christianity, who Jesus is, what the Bible says, the authority of scripture, all these things come into play and all these things are stripped away when we start saying, you know what, 
I don't know if they fit with my life as I want them to. And, uh, and then we start changing them. Here's, here's when it's okay to deconstruct your faith. And I think a lot of these people that were kind of angry at me or, or maybe like, Isaac, I don't think you're getting this right. I think they have a different definition of deconstructionist and that's okay, right? I just think you should be careful about identifying with certain movements that are on the vast majority antithetical to the gospel. Like, I don't think if you're in this camp that I'm going to explain, I don't think you really should be identifying with the deconstructionist movement because I think it has a lot of things in it that you just don't want to be a part of, right? So there are certain people that grew up in church that have learned things that are just false about who God is, what Christianity is about, um, the scriptures, what the scriptures teach. And so uh, I just want an example of this is the vast majority not the vast majority, that, that might be a little bit of overstatement, but I've talked to so many um, Christian young adults that are just enveloped in a shame, just like a, a weight and a shame because they've been taught this Jesus, this God that is o like an overbearing father that is disappointed in us, that will never be satisfied with anything that we, we do, that is always kind of looking over our shoulders to criticize, condemn, and judge us. And yes, maybe there was the, oh yeah, but Jesus is, you know, he's about, uh, you know, there's grace there too, but you're a piece of trash and you should remember that. So there's this kind of lurking shame over our shoulders and there's no kind of understanding of, oh, we were created in the image of God. Oh, we're created new in him. God loves us and accepts us and that we are we are made in his image and, and empowered by his power and his presence to live a life for him and that, that, that through Christ, we are enough in that, right? In Christ, we are enough in that. Not without him, right? But with him, yes. And so, you know, there needs to be some deconstruction of that, the lie, right? That you're just a piece of garbage, that God could never love you, that you're just, you know, you know, like a worm to God, like all these kind of things that are uh, propagated, maybe within the more conservative church, we need to deconstruct those things. Absolutely. And that's why I don't want you to think that when I talk about deconstruction, that you should just, oh, accept every single thing that you're taught because we wouldn't want to question anything and therefore put into question the validity of the Bible or anything like that. No, we're called to discern what people are saying to us. We're not just called, okay, I'm just going to accept everything. Yum, 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 yum. Like everything is, is gospel to me. But no, now when we have the authority of the scripture, we understand that this above anything else that anybody else is going to tell us. And we can see those things, those messages that we're getting, those sermons that we're getting through the lens of what the scripture says. And we can begin to interpret that. That, is, that doesn't mean we're not going to listen to pastors or teachers in our life. That just means we're going to listen to it with an open Bible. And so I don't want you to think that we should never question what we're taught within the church, right? Because there's so many different uh, churches and, and different terms of, uh, you know, pastors and, and teachings on specific things. That's okay, right? And, and, and I think I wouldn't necessarily encourage you to identify with the deconstructionist movement. I need to pull apart everything that I've been taught within because you get into really dangerous territory when you start identifying with the people that are like, oh man, you know, the Bible is the Bible really the word, word of God? I'm not sure about that. Or, you know, can we really believe like, the Bible's kind of corrupt? Or, um, you know, the Bible's teachings are kind of bigoted in some ways. If you start identifying with those people, I just think that's a dangerous road to go on. But we can approach deconstructing maybe some of the things that we were taught as kids through the lens of the scripture, through the lens of God's revealed revelation to us. General revelation is, is what we see around in creation, right? It shows us that God is a, a creative God, that he makes beautiful things, that he has a uh, it just he has an emphasis on both simplicity and complexity and the interworkings of those things. But through the through the the revealed scripture to us, that is his words to us in explaining the gospel and who he is. And we can explore what he has to say to us through that. But when you begin to take shots at the Bible and put into question its authority in general, you are left on sinking sand. You are left with no foundation. And a lot of these people within the deconstructionist movement will try to take some pieces from the Bible and then disregard 
others. And this kind of pick and choose mentality, this there's cherry picking mentality ultimately won't last. And that's why I say that a lot of people that get on this deconstructionist train are either going to end up in straight out atheism or just hypocrisy. Because when you put into question the authority of the scripture, all of a sudden, yeah, you're like, okay, well, maybe homosexuality is not a sin. Maybe abortion's okay. Um, you know, maybe these things that are sins in the Bible, that's not really true, right? Then what what is to say that Jesus's words uh, about uh, what he says are valid, right? There's some people that call themselves just the red letter Christians. Oh, just Jesus is words is what I listen to. Um, but how do you know if the Bible was written by man? How do you know if those are actually Jesus's words to you? And they don't, and they're like, oh yeah, that's a good point. And they begin on this path of like, okay, questioning, 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 questioning. And what I've said before is that there's almost an overemphasis on being uncertain in these communities. It's like, it's good to be uncertain. It's good to be questioning. It's good to be um, kind of uh, wallowing in your um, unknowing. Um, but yet there's so much beauty in having confidence in what God has said to us, having confidence in who God has revealed himself to be. I know there's been a lot of church hurt. Like there... You can't, you can really go through growing up as a Christian and not experience some level of like either hurt towards the church or maybe a teaching that, that was just not correct and it kind of worked its way into your system and you're still kind of reeling from that and you're trying to unlearn that because it, maybe it was your parents, maybe it was pastors or teachers. It just kind of, it got into your system and it kind of distorted your perspective of God. And if that's the case, if that's something that's happened for you, um, I, I want you and I encourage you to begin on the process of like working through that. And I'm sure you already are, but I just want to you know, say that that's not a bad thing. That's not making you a bad Christian because all of a sudden you're putting into question these things that you were taught. I, that doesn't put you in the same ca camp as these people that are throwing away the scriptures, throwing away their faith and saying, you know what? I don't know if I believe like you don't have to be associating the same camp as those people. You can be like legitimately, Hey, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus, that Jesus died for my sins. I believe that the word of God is true. I'm just trying to figure out exactly where that puts me in these things that I've been taught, whether that's about shame or my self worth or, or uh, how I need to operate in this world. Like there are so many questions that we still have. But how we explore those and how we um, engage with those needs to be from the foundation of the scripture, because otherwise you're just going off your own opinion. Like ultimately, we're left with this question of who do I value most? What, what, whose opinion do I value most? Do I value my opinion most or do I value God's opinion most? And I realize, look. Uh, okay, well, like, how do we find out God's opinion? Well, we look in the scriptures. We're discerning. We're using hermeneutics. Hermeneutics is a way how we understand and interpret the scripture. Yes, you're going to need to consult with Bible commentaries and things like that. But at the end of the day, I think it's much less about the information that we're missing. And it's more about the inward transformation that, that still needs to take place from the Holy Spirit. Like, even if you're a Christian, you're like, you're still on this process of this ongoing transformation and healing. So there is a lot of healing that is yet to take place. Just like, like some people think that, okay, once you become a Christian, right? Um, you're maybe if you have like an outward injury, like you're in a wheelchair or something, uh, yeah, that's not going to be healed, but all your internals are going to be healed. Right. But that's not true. Yes. We are saved. We are, um, you know, transformed. We're given a new heart with new desires. But then there's this process of sanctification, right? And transformation and healing. And this is a progressive thing. And we shouldn't be afraid of that. We shouldn't be uh, scared of that or think that makes us a bad Christian because we don't have, we're still having, you know, questions or whatever. No, like I'm going to embrace this season of healing and actually begin to take some time to have conversations with people in my life about the things that I'm going through, the questions that I'm having, the struggles that I'm having, I found that the most healing that has taken place in my life and is only fueled by when I let it out, when I let my thoughts, my questions, and maybe that's just my personality. I'm a verbal processor and that's just how I need to get things out. But when I can work through these things with someone and just say, hey, this is what I'm experiencing. I feel worthless right now. I just feel like I, I can't do anything for God, right? And I feel like everything that I do, it just falls short. And I just, I, I just don't even know how to operate now. I'm just enveloped in this shame. 
And, um, and it just doesn't even feel like God's empowered me to do anything. Like these are the kind of things that I'm working through personally and being able to verbalize and vocalize those things to somebody in, like that I trust in my life. Um, is so important. Um, w- just a kind of a, a jumping off point. When we talk about, you know, v- verbalizing these vulnerable things that are going on within us, whether that's your own kind of deconstruction, but I don't like to use that word, but you know what I mean based on what I've already explained. You know, you're, you're trying to deconstruct the things that, that are, that, that were just mangled things in your life that you were taught early on about the scriptures that just weren't true. You recognize that now. Um, so how do you actually begin to process this with somebody in your life? Well, you need to find somebody that is both compassionate and curious. And so we often encounter people that are, you know, curious about our lives, but they're not compassionate. So they'll ask you lots of questions. They're like, how are you doing? You know, what's what's life like? What's going on? But then they're, you're kind of met with this judgment almost. And you're like, well, that was nice that I talked a lot, but then I go away feeling judged and like I'm, I'm not enough or I'm doing the wrong thing or whatever. Um, and then you talk to people that maybe are, compassionate but they're not curious like they're nice people but they never ask you enough questions to really get deep you don't feel comfortable going deep with that person when you find that kind of person that can go um, deep with you that is curious but is also compassionate about what you're going through and it can uh, reaffirm and also guide you towards truth like that's such a important element it's like i'm going to affirm you but i'm also going to spur you on towards truth that is an amazing kind of friendship relationship that that needs to be fostered. And I know a lot of people, you don't have that right now, and that's okay. Um, Things like that and people like that, they're tough to find. But when you do find them and when you do begin to put yourself out there enough, like, you know, you're not, you're not spilling your guts to every person you meet, but you're testing the waters to see, okay, what, what, how is this person responding to my vulnerability? It's like, okay, now I'm going to open up a little bit more. And through that relationship, because I, really do believe it's that connection that really um, works its way towards healing that that is going to be the vessel by which you can process some of the the the, the just the negative the, the 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 distortions that you experience growing up or even now or even recently that have come kind of wake, making their way into your 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 life your faith walk that just need to be out that just need to get out and that you just needed healing and and refreshment and transformation and so you know if you're walking through this and you're having questions or whatever like I just want to say hey look that's okay that's okay but let's process them in a way that's healthy that's not just throwing everything out oh, I'm just done I'm gonna just you know become an atheist or I'm just gonna become an agnostic or I'm just gonna become a progressive Christian because all these people are talking about the negative aspects of the church or some of the you know things that they were taught in the church that weren't good or purity culture or whatever. It's like, okay, like we can recognize, hey, look, you got some points there, but at the same time, I'm going to hold true to the foundation of God's word and I'm going to process, I'm going to heal and I'm going to seek his truth in this. And that's where we need to be. I hope you found this video encouraging and insightful in some way. I put out videos pretty much every single day at this point. And the only reason I'm able to do that is because of people on Patreon. Like I said, it's my goal to be able to do this full time. That's my mission is to help people follow Jesus daily, to help you follow Jesus daily. And if that's something you want to get behind, if that's a mission that you're committed to, um, head on over to Patreon for as little as $5 a month. You can help support what I'm doing here. So thank you so much for that. You can give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel because I'm like I said, I'm putting out videos every single day. You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at It's Isaac David. I'm putting out videos all the time on there. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you later. God bless.